Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I would like to share with you top 10 web part ideas for your SharePoint uh, internet. Uh, let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So uh, as you build um, your uh, department sites, as you build your uh, internet portal, um, you know, essentially for your organization, uh, obviously, one of the big decisions you have to make is what kind of web parts you're going to add to your uh, internet portal. Now, the web parts, um, you know, the choice of web parts really depends, obviously, on the content you're going to uh, add to your uh, internet portal. Uh, but uh, what I decided to do in this particular video is... Um, you know, combine essentially a list uh, what are, in my opinion, the top 10 uh, web parts uh, that are kind of the most popular uh, from, uh, you know, my perspective, from my uh, client's perspective. So uh, just to let you know, I have been building uh, internet portals, um, you know, SharePoint internet portals uh, for uh, my clients for many, many years. And over the years, I pretty much noticed uh, a specific, you know, I guess, trend in terms of uh, popular popularity of some of this, uh, you know, web parts and widgets. Uh, so that's what essentially prompted me to uh, record this particular, uh, you know, video and share uh, my, you know, my experience uh, with you and uh, share uh, once again what are, in my opinion, um, kind of the most popular web parts you would typically see uh, on a company uh, internet portal. So hopefully uh, by watching um, you know, this video, you will get a much better idea of uh, what your own company internet uh, portal uh, should look like, uh, what kind of you know, web parts, what kind of uh, um, you know, widgets, I guess, uh, you uh, can add to your internet uh, portal to uh, spice it up a little bit and uh, make it a little bit more you know, visually appealing and uh, exciting for your, for your employees. Now, perhaps, um, you know, before we uh, proceed, before I proceed and, you know, and explain uh, all of these different web parts I want to share with you today, um, I think it would be important, uh, you know, to first um, explain to you what a web part is. All right, so let me do that uh, right now. Um, what you see right now on the screen is actually an example of a company internet uh, built in SharePoint. All right. Now the way uh, the way you know obviously SharePoint works, and you know typically a SharePoint internet would work, it would consist of different uh, sites. Uh, the more sites, the better, as a matter of fact. All right. The idea behind a site: think of a site, a SharePoint site, as pretty much a, a workspace where you would share uh, certain information. Uh, with uh, your employees. So let's take a typical organization. It could be maybe 50 people, 100, maybe, you know, hundreds and thousands of users, right? Um, you know, typically, even for small organizations, you have different departments and, you know, different uh, functions uh, within your organization. So um, in this particular case, you will actually have uh, many, many different sites, uh, you know, typically one for each department, one uh, for each uh, function. So just to give you an example, so what you see right now on the screen is uh, a company intranet, and uh, specifically what you see on the screen right now is the main, you know, intranet site. And we call it, a, you, you know, home site or hub site, even though these are two different pieces of terminology from SharePoint perspective. But essentially, this is kind of the main site that um, would be accessible by all the employees. All right. This is where you would find company news and announcements, you know, events, links, you know, essentially all the information that needs to be accessible by everyone. Uh, and then, just like I mentioned, um, you know, you would uh, you would have uh, you know additional sites, multiple sites, uh, because, for example, uh, you might have uh, I'm pretty sure uh, an HR department, human resources department, all right, and um, that particular department, that particular function might want to share certain information, um, you know, HR related information, uh, or you know, with uh, the rest uh, with the rest of the employees. And, uh, you know, same concept, if you notice, it actually utilizes, you know, it's a different URL, so that's a different site 
uh, all together. And, you know, let's, let me show you one more. You might have maybe a site for accounting or marketing or legal uh, or, you know, finance, any other department you might have. Now, uh, you might ask a question, why, uh, why having uh, multiple sites? Why, you know, why do we need to create all the sites? Well, uh, the idea behind a site is that it contains unique content. And it can also, um, uh, you know, usually, usually one of the reasons why we create another site is because of unique security. Uh, let me give you an example. Again, let's take a typical organization. And, um, um, you know, let's say this main site would be maintained by a marketing department, marketing and communications. But, you know, all the HR information needs to uh, be maintained by HR, right? So in this particular case, uh, we want kind of a separation of roles, all right? Separation of roles uh, and permissions. So uh, this is one, you know, one of the, um, you know, uh, probably best use cases. Uh, you might have unique security for the main site and you will have uh, unique security for HR site. So for example, in this particular case, uh, the site will be maintained you know, by these people, all right? And maybe the main site will be maintained by completely different users, different employees. Site is where we, ma uh, we manage security as well. That's the best practice in SharePoint. You want to really, you know, manage security at the site level. So the idea is that uh, you create all these different sites for different departments and each of them, you know, they have their own, you know, unique content uh, and security. So that was kind of a lengthy, you know, overview uh, of the uh, SharePoint sites model, but I, I thought it was necessary to introduce you to the concept of sites first before we dive into uh, the web parts and uh, the various selection of web parts we have available in SharePoint. At this point, I would like to um, actually explain to you the idea behind uh, web parts and explain to you what they're all about. So um, if I maybe stay here on this uh, human resources uh, site, so as you uh, create sites or maybe IT department creates sites for you, um, by default, they already contain, um, you know, it's very unlikely they will be blank, all right? By default, they already contain based on the template that uh, was chosen, uh, they might already contain uh, certain web parts. But what is, a, what is a web part? A web part, think of a web part as almost like an app on your phone, all right? You know how on your phone you have uh, an app for everything? Well, in SharePoint, we have an app for everything as well. We call it a web part. Uh, and uh, the idea behind a web part is that think of it as a, a little, you know, widget. You know, we again, we call it the official name is web part. But think of it as a little widget uh, application, if you will, uh, that um, uh, it shows and displays information uh, uh, on the site. So a web part is used to either store or, you know, present uh, and display the information, certain uh, type of information uh, on a site. Uh, for example, uh, this thing right here uh, that you see in the middle of this uh, page, this is a countdown timer web part, all right? It allows us to uh, set a deadline and uh, essentially, uh, you know, uh, essentially count the clock, I guess, towards the deadline, all right? So that's a unique piece of content. Uh, this links right here, this is actually a quick links uh, web part, all right? Uh, the, the web part that allows us to add links. By the way, I will be describing uh, most of these widgets, you know, web parts to you in this video. Uh, we have a news web part for news. We have a separate web part for uh, events. Uh, this is the events uh, web part. Let me go to uh, the main site just to show you a few additional web parts. Um, you probably see this uh, web part quite often. It's a part of many, many different, um, uh, you know, templates, uh, site uh, templates. So this is called the hero web part. So if you have lots of content to demonstrate to uh, and, and display to your um, users, uh, if you have lots of links, uh, I should say, and you could actually have those, um, you know, uh, nice and attractive images with links uh, behind them. Uh, once again, we have links web part, uh, we have uh, 
you know, Twitter web part or X, I guess, web part, as we should call it now. Once again, news, events, weather, um, you know, locations and so on. So essentially a web part um, is a little, uh, you know, app. Think about it as a little app, a little uh, widget that does, allows you to display certain uh, information. So what you see right now on the screen are uh, essentially the uh, 10 web parts I'm going to review and explain to you uh, in uh, this particular video. Now, uh, once again, as mentioned earlier, um, there are many web parts, there are many you know, apps that exist uh, within SharePoint that you can add to your sites and uh, pages. Uh, these are kind of the most, uh, the top 10, the most popular, you know, web parts that I typically see on my clients, uh, you know, internet portals. So what I'm going to do for the rest uh, of the video, uh, we will go and spend uh, a few minutes on each one of them. And I will explain the functionality, in some cases, some limitations. Um, some web parts have more functionality than the others, so I will explain all the various, you know, kind of nuances and capabilities of each of these uh, web parts. Now, these web parts uh, are not listed in any particular order. Uh, they are kind of all equally important, uh, you know, to me and my clients. So, uh, but uh, they, you know, uh, what I once again summarized on this particular uh, slide. Uh, are the top 10 uh, web parts uh, that I see um, most frequently been used, uh, you know, uh, by my clients and by me when I build uh, internet portals uh, uh, for my clients as well. So the first thing we're going to do is actually create a brand new uh, SharePoint site. Um, obviously, what you see right now on the screen is kind of the internet I already have in my environment uh, that has already been built. I'm going to create a brand new uh, site, and that's where we're going to add all the uh, web parts to. Uh, now, um, depending on the, you know, kind of uh, governance policies within your organization, you might or might not be able to uh, create uh, new sites in SharePoint. Uh, by default, um, uh, all the users, all the employees can create sites. So if you cannot create a site, that means your IT department has uh, disabled that capability. Uh, but I will proceed uh, under the assumption that uh, you can create um, uh, new sites yourself. Uh, once again, if uh, this is not something you can do, then you would need to request uh, a site uh, from your IT department. Now, it is super important to note that um, if if you are going to request a site from your IT department, you request the right type of site to be created. Uh, let me explain. Uh, so, um, obviously, the topic of this video is you know internet portal and the web parts we're going to build. Uh, you know, we are going to add to our internet portal. Uh, typically, uh, when you create an internet portal, uh, you, you know, that's, that assumes the communication aspect, right? Uh, so uh, when you create a site in SharePoint, there are two types of sites you can create. You can create either a communication site or a team site. For our use case, if you are building an intranet, you do want to build, uh, you do want to create a communication site. And a communication site, uh, this is what it looks like, all right? It's this wide screen. Um, uh, no left-hand side navigation type of site. And yeah, let me show you another example. The Essentially, all my department sites are communication type of sites uh, based on communication site template. Essentially, the purpose, the objective of this communication site template is uh, to, you know, one-way information sharing. The reason I mentioned this is because uh, quite often I see clients, uh, you know, creating a team site. This is what a team site looks like, all right? A team site, and if you notice, it looks a bit different. Uh, it does have left-hand side navigation. It's connected to Microsoft 365 Group. This is the type of site that's connected to Microsoft Teams. This is the wrong type of site to um, uh, create an internet with, all right? Uh, and the reason for that is because these sites are meant for two-way collaboration, all right? Uh, the assumption here is that uh, you know, they are meant for two-way collaboration because, once again, these types of sites are connected uh, to uh, to Teams and Planner and Microsoft 365 Group. 
um, they are not meant for one-way information sharing. So when you create a site, I'll walk you through the steps right now on how uh, to create the proper type of site. But if you do request uh, a site from your IT department, make sure to request a communication site, not a team site. All right, so once again, let's go back to our internet portal. So let's go ahead and create a brand new site. Uh, there are different ways, there are many different ways to create a brand new site, uh, but um, obviously UIT can do it from the SharePoint Admin Center. But in our case, right, I'll proceed under the assumption that we can do so uh, ourselves. So you would navigate to this uh, SharePoint uh, start page. All right, by uh, just once again, by clicking on SharePoint right here. And let's create a new site. Once again, by default, the setting is enabled. All right, so you can actually create, uh, you, you know, typically uh, sites yourself unless UIT has disabled this functionality. And uh, what you are going to see, these are the two uh, types of sites I just mentioned to you. Uh, communication site or team site. We are going to choose communication site, and this is the, you know, type of site that UIT uh, needs uh, to create for you. All right, so make sure to request a communication type of site. It even tells you right here in fine print that this is used for collaboration, right? It tells you it connects to other Microsoft 365, you know, uh, products like Teams, Planner, and uh, Outlook. Again, we're not interested in this aspect just yet. We're building an informational, you know, kind of portal right here. So choose communication site. Now, um, the next screen you're going to see, you're going to see all these different templates that Microsoft, uh, you know, has for you. By the way, there is actually a much larger selection of templates. I will explain how this works uh, a little bit, um, you know, later in this video. And these are based on different scenarios. For example, uh, let's say we are building a department site, all right, or a human resources site. We, we already have a certain template um, you know, available. And essentially what these templates are, these are the kind of pre-built, um, you know, sites for you that already contain all these different web parts, as you can see, all right, some of which I described, uh, you know, already to you. Uh, now, in all honesty, in my personal opinion, I, you know, I, I like to start uh, everything from scratch, essentially from blank piece of paper, if you will. And the reason for that is because um, when you install those templates, all right, they actually install all this, um, you know, images and all this potentially irrelevant uh, stuff that you might not need, all right? Um, now, they do look nice, uh, you know, uh, obviously. For example, let's take uh, HR over here, HR template. They do look nice, but the reason why they look nice is because, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, added some nice images here and some fake content and all that stuff. Now, you might or might not necessarily um, you know, have all this content and all this, you know, images to support this, right? So uh, what I usually say, you know, what I usually tell to my clients, look, if you just want to see how SharePoint works and maybe need some ideas on uh, how to, um, you, you know, how to potentially utilize SharePoint, uh, you might benefit from one of these, you know, templates. I mean, they do look nice, uh, no doubt uh, about them. Uh, however, if you want, you know, I always uh, tell my clients, you know, let's build a site and let's only add the web parts uh, that we need based on the content you have. All right. Uh, again, for example, just to give an example, um, this template looks, you know, looks nice. All right. But um, if you are not using, you know, maybe Viva Engage, right? If uh, um, you know, I don't know, you are, are not using certain functionalities uh, within your organization, you might not necessarily, or maybe some videos or whatever, they embed on the templates, uh, you might not necessarily need all those additional uh, web parts that will be installed, right? And that's the thing about them, is that it's all or nothing, all right? Um, if you install a template, it will install all of those different images and uh, fake, you know, folders and fake links and icons, you know, uh, into your environment. And, uh, you know, once again, my personal opinion that I like to start uh, from scratch. This way we get to build what we need to build based on the actual content uh, that we have. Because another thing I tell my clients is don't forget, at the end of the day, once we build a site, uh, somebody will need to maintain it. 
right? Uh, somebody will need to maintain it. So let's keep it simple, all right? Let's not overwhelm the site owners. Let's not overwhelm uh, the, you know, our employees. Let's keep it nice and simple. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to choose this one right here, this template. This kind of is a very simple template. It still installs some web parts, but not too many, you know, it doesn't install any like fake images or, you know, any, you know, stuff, you know, links and, um, you know, navigation elements or extra pages that you don't need. All right. Um, so I'm going to choose this one. It's almost like a blank, you know, <laughs> you know, page, if you will. So let's do that. And it gives you a preview once you choose a particular template. As you can see, it doesn't have much. All right. But that's what we want because we want to start almost, you know, with blank, you know, piece of paper, if you will. So uh, we'll use uh, this template. And uh, on the next uh, step, uh, we need to, uh, you know, provide the name of the site. So uh, let's do something like this company ABC Internet. I mean, obviously you, you call it whatever you want to call it. Uh, now behind the scenes, every single site has its own URL. So it uh, goes and does a bit of a background check to make sure that the URL is available. It has to be unique. If it's not, then it will uh, provide you with a variation. And after you, um, you know, alter the URL if necessary, in our case, uh, we don't need to click next. And yeah, it defaults to your company, I guess, you know, tenant level uh, language. We don't need to worry about it here. Uh, the only reason why you would need to change it, right? I mean, if you are a multinational um, corporation and maybe you want a default language for your site to be something else, but in our case, let's keep it as is. And we are going to create a site. And let's see what happens after it's all said and done. So it's actually creating a site and then applying a template, right? It, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer because obviously, right, depending on the uh, on the template you have chosen. But here it is, all right? Here it is. Our, uh, you know, our site was created. And essentially now, uh, if you notice, uh, it already contains some of this um, you know, web parts that were part of the template. In our case, it's not a lot. We're actually going to add our own, uh, but uh, we do have some already added as part of the template. So the first uh, web part um, we are going to start with is the Hero web part. That's actually uh, this web part right here that you can see. Uh, we got it as part of the template, by the way, uh, most templates, uh, you know, that you install, most uh, communication sites already have this hero web part. Uh, but uh, let me um, explain to you what this is all about, and I'll explain to you how to configure this particular web part, and we'll talk about some nuances as well. So the idea behind this uh, hero uh, web part is that if you want to highlight users' attention, um, let's say you have some links to important uh, content. Uh, you uh, can uh, essentially add this uh, web port and uh, you know have the images and links behind them. All right. So all it is the hero web port. It's you know all these different tiles, and each tile can have its own image and a link. That's all it is. Uh, now, uh, in our case, the web port already got added um, uh, to to the page. Let's pretend uh, we uh, we don't have this web port on our site. Uh, we need to add it. Let me show you how to do that. So um, in the operating corner, you would need to click the edit button. Now, anytime you want to add a web part to your site, to your page, you would need to click the edit button. And when you click the edit button, uh, the page goes into the edit mode. And this is where you can add all this uh, web parts to the uh, to your page. Let me actually, you know what? What I will do, I will delete because remember we got some of this web parts installed uh, for us. Uh, I'll just delete, remove all, all of them because we do want our uh, own, um, you know, kind of a look and feel. So let's start from uh, pretty much uh, from scratch. You know what? I'll do this as well. All right, perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and assume we don't have this web part. Uh, we are going to add it to our uh, to our page. You click the plus sign. And uh, this is where you can split your 
uh, page into um, you know different sections and columns. Uh, let's just do one column. You know, layout doesn't really matter. And uh, how do you add web parts to your uh, you know to your page? You just literally sometimes it's hard to see. You know, you kind of have to hover over in the top center of the uh, of your column. And you will see this little plus sign. Now, um, this is actually super important. What you are going to see are all the out-of-the-box web parts that exist uh, in your uh, environment, uh, all right, uh, in your tenant. Um, we are going to cover um, just 10, I guess, out of those web parts. But um, just wanted to show you that the the list is much, uh, you know, much bigger, all right. And uh, essentially, yeah, you can just add any of those different web parts to your pages. Um, let's start with the hero web part. Here it is. All right. Uh, by the way, you can either uh, you can either select it from the list or just type in if you know the name. Here we go. All right. Uh, I can add this web part uh, to our um, you know to our page now. And look at this. It added this particular uh, web part to our uh, to our page. And uh, now we can, you know, configure it. Let me show you a few different configuration options. Um, so uh, in terms of this uh, web part, so if you click on the pencil icon, pencil icon is how you access uh, all the additional settings for this particular web part. Uh, we are going to utilize pencil icon quite a bit um, in this video. Why? Because each and every web part has one. And it's like your uh, window into additional uh, settings, into additional settings uh, for this particular web part. Now, this here web part has two diff different types of styles. It has the tiles, which is what you see here, anywhere between one and five, or it does this layers, all right? It's kind of this cascading type, you see. This is what it looks like. Uh, my own preference, I mean, in my opinion, this this looks nice, but takes a bit of real estate. You see, there is a little bit of uh, up and down scroll uh, we have to do. So let's keep it simple. Uh, tiles, all right? Now, another thing you can configure is uh, this, you know, the essentially the number of tiles. By default, it adds five, but you can go anywhere from one, yeah, till five, all right? So maybe in our case, uh, let's make it three, all right? And uh, so now, once you configure this, uh, you uh, can pretty much um, you can pretty much add the actual content and the links. So let's make it happen. Uh, pretty straightforward, all right. All you need to do is just click on you know select link uh, button, and you can link to anything you want, all right. Uh, let's just say I don't know. Um, let's just pick maybe my blog, all right. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to link to that. You can embed any link. So it could be internal, external, doesn't really matter. All right, I don't think I clicked. Uh, let me try it again. Here we go, click add. And what's going to happen, uh, it's actually going to uh, add a link. Uh, and uh, it automatically extracts the image. You know, uh, I guess it uh, took my logo or something from here. Uh, but uh, luckily, we can change it. We can adjust it. How do you adjust kind of uh, the look and feel of the style? Uh, if you you see this pencil icon in the upper left hand corner, this controls the overall settings for the whole hero you know web part. However, each tile each tile has its own additional settings. You see. So if I click on this pencil icon, this is where I can control you know, kind of the whatever I can control for this, uh, you know, tile. Uh, now, in our case, I can change the URL if I want to, or you know what, I'm going to change an image, all right? I don't no, I don't like how it looks. So uh, you can either proceed with the color block, all right? And the color is extracted from your, um, you know, theme, all right? Or, you know what, I'm going to go for custom image. Let's change it to something else. You know what, just for the purpose of this, I'm going to proceed with one of the stock images. All right, this looks pretty right here. So let me do that just like that, all right? And, um, you know, uh, what you can do, let me show you what else we can do. So we can provide the title over here. All right, so I'm go just going to say, uh, I don't know, company blog or something right here. And one additional settings we can setting we can control here, uh, we can add this um, 
call to action. If I'm not mistaken, this call to action is only available on this main tile. I don't think it's available over here. We'll double check. But this is where you can uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, let's just try it out uh, just to show you what it looks like. Here we go. And maybe I say, uh, I don't know, check it out just like that. You see it adds a, this kind of uh, support text. All right. So, uh, and then all you have to do, so we made our changes. Uh, whenever you make changes, whenever you add uh, web parts to your page, do not forget to republish. Republish, it's like going live, all right? So if I don't republish, nobody will see the changes. So I'm going to republish. And now we are going to see uh, uh, this happening right here, all right? So now if I uh, click on this uh, links, as you, as you can see, right, it opens up essentially um, the URL that you put in there, all right? Uh, let me show you a few more things about this hero uh, web part. So let's add another one. Let's add another one. All right, just so that we have something. By the way, right, you can link to whatever you want, but you know, just to make it easier, let's link it to one of the internal pages. And um, once again, we can change the images here. Let's do one more. Uh, all right, just want to show you something. All right, now uh, let me actually republish that. Let me explain to you what I want to uh, show you here. Uh, you might notice that we have this two hero web parts. One got added. Uh, when we created the site and one I just kind of added myself here and if you notice uh, this takes you know all this uh, real estate you know of the page from left to right and this one does not lots of white space on the left and right hand sides why is that uh, that's because remember let me show you when you edit the page when you add when you add uh, another section, you have to make a choice what kind of layout you're going to uh, choose. And I chose one column layout. And unfortunately, with one column layout, this is what you get to see, lots of white space on left and uh, right hand sides. Um, and the reason for that is because, right, we all have different um, computers and displays, right, and uh, different uh, aspect ratios, uh, different sizes of monitors. So um, depending on maybe if I'm viewing on the laptop, this might not be the case. I might not see so much uh, white space, all right? So to avoid the white space, what you need to do is add a full width section in here, all right? Now, and a full width section, it is what it tells you it's going to be. It's going to take the whole, you know, all of the real estate. You're not going to see any white space on left and right hand side. Now, the downside of this full width section is that there are only three widgets, three web parts that uh, can belong here. You can add an image, all right? Here a web part and countdown timer. By the way, we will talk about countdown timer web part, one of my favorite web parts. So if I want, um, you know, obviously I don't want to create a brand new hero web part. I'm just going to drag and drop it in here and look at this. Now it takes, you know, the um, uh, all of the real estate on your on your screen. All right. And uh, depending, by the way, I mean, right, you don't need to, you don't need to, uh, let me drag it uh, back over here. All right, not sure why it doesn't allow me to drag. Here we go. Uh, so in some cases, this is nice, all right, you do want to take um, the full, um, you know, width. Uh, in some cases, uh, maybe not, all right, maybe, you know what, we don't have enough, you know, real estate, uh, maybe, or we have too much content on our, you know, page. Uh, so in some cases, on purpose, I will proceed and kind of do this setup. And, um, you know, this will allow you to add additional widgets to the right of the hero web part or something like that. All right. Uh, one of the techniques that uh, you might utilize, and this is actually quite a recent development, you can actually now, um, you know, do all this different backgrounds, you know, section backgrounds. So uh, to avoid all this different white space, but I wanted to show you uh, kind of uh, uh, one of this uh, few limitations of the uh, hero web part. Uh, once again, I uh, added, uh, I edited the page. Uh, I'm going to republish. So everyone gets to see uh, my changes. And uh, um, uh, this is probably everything I wanted to explain about uh, the hero web part. 
So let us proceed now. And the next web part I want to explain um, another one of my favorite web parts, probably a, definitely a staple on many, many different department sites and internet portals, the news web part. Just to explain to you what it looks like, here it is, all right? Essentially, this allows you to capture the news and announcements within your organization. And uh, let me explain to you how this works. This is quite um, a very useful web part, a very configurable web part. So let me explain to you uh, how that works. So let's proceed. I'm going to uh, edit the page again. You know what I'm going to do just so that we have enough uh, real estate? I'm going to delete this uh, section over here. And I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to add, you know, let's switch it uh let's switch it back to uh full width all right so i'm going to just uh do something like this all right perfect so we have that on top and i'm going to add another um uh section so we have widgets to add to uh, our section so you know what i'm going to do three column layout three column i i do like a three column layout why because it allows you to put you know and added additional stuff right uh utilize the uh real estate on your screen wisely so let's add uh the news widget all right the news web part so i'm going to click uh, the uh plus uh, uh button over here and yeah you typically would see it on the list all right uh right here once again you can just type it in here we go and let me explain to you what uh, this widget is all about so first of all let's republish so uh like i mentioned already a news web part allows you to publish news all right publish news and uh, uh when you let's say we add, need to add some news to our uh to our internet portal so let's add a few announcements and then i'll uh explain some additional settings we have available so you hover over and say add and you will uh get to see uh two uh, options news post and news link what is the difference news link is for situations when you already have an article maybe i don't know uh my blog for example right a newspaper article uh some research article on the internet so any link you have out there you can actually paste it so let me uh let's go uh to my uh let's go to my uh, blog you know what i'm going to do i'm going to add um this particular blog as our uh, news and announcement all right so i copied the url of my article and i paste it here and what's going to happen uh it's the same experience as if you are uh, embedding an article on twitter or linkedin all right or facebook all right you know when you add an article it kind of extracts the title and some you know metadata information description and an image that's exactly what happened happens here all right so all you have to do is just literally paste the link to that blog or newspaper article and click post all right and look at this look at this it's been posted uh, to our uh, news web board all right uh, by the way another way to create this news uh, and announcements would be to click new here and uh, select either news post or news link but once again typically typically right this is probably the most uh, natural way to do it so anytime you have an article out there somewhere that already exists just click add news link paste the url and you're done all right now let's say i want to create our own announcement i want to create some company announcement uh, welcome employee uh, something or something like that in this case, you would need to click add and say news post. And on the next screen, you're going to see uh, all this uh, different, um, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I guess, templates uh, for your news that are available. Now, um, this section over here is relatively new. I actually plan to record another video soon on how to um you know how to create uh essentially uh newsletters within uh you know sharepoint but uh let's start with this uh blank one all right um i'll explain to you later what this are all about perhaps in another video uh let's start with the blank announcement 
And uh, essentially, if you ever created pages uh, in SharePoint, uh, you are probably familiar with this experience. And the reason for that is, and this is super important, is that each and every uh, announcement you create, uh, every you know piece of news, every announcement you create is, ends up being another SharePoint page. I'll actually prove this to you uh, in a second. So let's just say, welcome Mary to the team, all right? And you know, uh, some text, all right? Now, um, when you create an announcement yourself, uh, this page behaves like any other, you know, page, just like a normal SharePoint page. You can actually add, you know, additional web parts, widgets, whatever you want. Most likely, most likely, right? Uh, if you are creating an announcement, it's going to be text and images, maybe, uh, maybe a video, right? Uh, but uh, you know what? Let's uh, make it a little bit more exciting. Um, let's add this image in here. And you can upload your own, but you know what? I'm going to do one of the uh, stock images. Uh, let's just say, I don't know, something like this, perhaps. All right. Just like that. I mean, maybe, obviously, you would add in your case a photo of the employee. And one other thing you can do, you can actually tweak this a little bit, right? Uh, if you want to center, let's say uh, you're uploading a photo, it could be, uh, you, know, you know, a face maybe of the employee. All right. And by the way, we can also, we don't need to have this. We don't need to have this. Uh, there is a reason why I uploaded the image. I will, you will see in a second. But um, if you click on the pencil icon, if I don't want any images, all right, you can just choose for different styles or maybe this style. Um, you know, so yeah, you don't uh, you don't need to uh, uh, have an image. Just go with the plain uh, option. All right. Uh, but in our case, um, we are done. Let's pretend we created this announcement. Click post. All right. Just like with pages, you must uh, publish your announcement. Right. Don't forget to do that. All right. Now, because we created uh, our announcement from the news widget, let's check it out. Look at this. It shows you. Uh, the announcement uh, right in the news widget. All right, so it's smart enough. If you initiated your announcement from here, it will show it to you over here, all right? And uh, by default, it shows all the announcements in the reverse chronological order. So uh, it will just keep adding. And there is, a, there is a way for you to control how many appear. I'll show it to you in a second. But uh, bottom line is, uh, just like that, we added a few announcements. And if I click on this announcement, here we go. It goes straight to that uh, you know, particular uh, announcement. Now, um, while we're here, another thing I want to show you is, uh, remember how I said that each and every uh, announcement you create uh, creates another page in SharePoint? Let me prove it to you. So if you go to gear icon, site contents, site pages, all right. Site pages is a special library just for pages. All right. Just like we have the document library called documents for documents. This is where you store your uh, Word, Excel, PDFs, and so on. We have a special library for pages. This is where all the pages reside. And look at this. We have a total of, believe it or not, four pages already. Why? So this two uh, were the two pages we got as part of the template. Remember when we you know, created that basic template, that's, that was what, in, you know, installed in our tenant, you know, on our site. These two are the two announcements that we created, all right? So if you want to delete one of them, remember, you know, uh, we created an announcement that creates a page. So if you want to maybe, you know, tweak it in any way, you know, maybe you want to, uh, you know, delete it or something, you can do it from here. So it, you treat it like almost like a document, all right? So I wanted to show it to you now. In some cases, remember some of this, um, um, you, you know, templates, uh, uh, you know, when we created a site, you could install like an HR template or department template, right? Uh, some of those templates uh, install quite a bit of pages, all right? So in case if you see like 10, 15 pages, um, you know, the, the reason for that is because they all come as part of that template. So that's why, that's why I like to keep it simple. And that's why I went for absolute minimum, uh, and we, you know, that's why we're cre essentially creating our own experience with our own web parts uh, and pages. 
let me now show you some uh, additional settings uh, that we have available on the news web part. Uh, the beauty about this news web part, this is one of the most configurable web parts. I, th I, th I think it has uh, the most settings um, you know, compared to other web parts. So you can actually configure quite a bit of the behavior uh, and the display of your news um, uh, and announcements. So let me demonstrate how to do that. Click edit button. And uh, we click on the web part. And once again, remember that pencil icon. So this are additional settings. So let me show you a few options here. So, um, so by default, when you create a site, uh, it uh, essentially, right, your site is the source of news. But what you can do here, and this is super powerful, uh, you can actually roll up news under the new source. You can roll up news from other sites as well. So for example, you know what, maybe, uh, I don't know, this is like uh, uh, department, you know, ABC, right, or internet site, but you know what, I also trust some other departments and I want to roll up their news on my site, not a problem. You can say, you know, select sites and let's say we want to display HR, all right, remember, um, you know, remember I had that other human resources site, uh, that's where the, this news is coming from. All right. So, and you can actually select multiple. So I want my own announcements and announcements from that HR site. So you can actually configure it, um, you know, the way you, you wish, uh, and, uh, pull the news from other department sites. Now, let me show you, I'm going to step away from this, uh, site for a second. Uh, I'm going to go uh, to my uh, existing internet. And the reason for that is because remember how I mentioned earlier, um, you know, that uh, this internet portal is a hub site. Uh, well, uh, let me show you why um, uh, something unique here. Because this is a hub site, I registered this internet portal as a hub site. When I click the edit button here, all right, here we go. And I click on the news and pencil icon here, I have an additional selection here, an additional radio button, all sites in the hub. So, you know, uh, in SharePoint, we have this concept of um, uh, hub sites, probably something I will uh, explain in greater detail in one of the future videos. Uh, but uh, if you create a hub, essentially a collection of sites, you can automatically pull uh, the news and announcements from all the um, sites that are part of the hub. So I don't have this option on that other site because it's not a hub. But if you created a hub site, you can actually, uh, you can actually, um, you know, roll up, uh, uh, you know, all the uh, news and announcements from the whole hub just with the click of a button. So uh, that's what I wanted to show you uh, for this particular option. Uh, let's go back to our uh, portal uh, again to our site. So that's the source. So feel free to uh, check it out. Uh, the other uh, the other option available here, you can you know change the style of your news. This is just how they appear. Uh, all right, you can actually have a carousel uh, of the uh, you know, of your announcements. Uh, by the way, here, this is where you can control uh, how many are displayed. So by default, it's four. So let's say I added like 10 announcements, it will always be the last four. And this is the, you know, where I can control uh, how many uh, recent announcements are displayed. All right, and you can also control, you know, what is displayed. Like you see, I don't want to show the author, for example, all right? you can, uh, you know, kind of easily, or, or, or dates, you can actually hide those uh, pieces uh, of information. Uh, the carousel, uh, that's a cool one. Um, and, um, you know, it allows you to actually, um, you know, it, it will cycle through the news and you can actually automatically cycle and you can even set the number of seconds. So if I do something like this, every four seconds, the, it will be like a rotating, you know, banner. Uh, yeah, you probably saw it just now. Uh, it will switch uh, the, the announcements automatically, uh, you know, for you, which is probably uh, kind of, um, it will keep it, uh, you know, relevant. Uh, you can filter, you can filter uh, the, uh, you know, news based on specific maybe topics. All right. And uh, let me exp actually explain to you the reason for this. Uh, so uh, this might be quite handy. Uh, for example, uh, nothing stops you from adding 
you know, uh, to a news uh, web parts to your page, all right? But you know what? I want this to display maybe information related to a particular topic, all right? Uh, and maybe this will capture something else, all right? Maybe that will be like a blog, more of a blog, and this will be more like, I don't know, messages from uh, CEO or general news or something like that. Uh, that's exactly what you can control uh, by using this filter option. Now, it gets a bit sophisticated, so I'm not going to dive into those details on how to set that up, but just letting you know that this is, um, you know, this is possible. Uh, so audience target, and that's actually uh, pretty, uh, pretty important as well. I actually recorded a number of videos about audience targeting uh, on, uh, uh, on my channel already, uh, but this allows you to target news and announcements. All right, uh, and essentially uh, what that means is that, uh, let me give you a use case. Uh, you uh, may be uh, part of a large corporation, multinational corporation, and you know what? You published a news article, but it should only be seen by, um, you know, by employees uh, maybe that are full-time only, all right? Or they, it should only be seen by employees uh, from uh, that reside in a certain country. All right, uh, so actually, you know what? I'll probably need to come back to this. Let me show you how that works. I enabled audience targeting over here, and I'm going to republish. So I want this announcement over here to be only seen by maybe certain employees, all right? So once you enable uh, that audience targeting uh, within uh, the news web part, um, there is actually one more place before we can uh, target our announcements. There is one more place where we need to enable audience targeting. Uh, we need to check a, a box. Let me show you. So uh, once again, step number one, you uh, enable it uh, over here, right? At the widget level with that uh, toggle. Then you navigate to of the site pages library and uh, yeah we're at the library level but then you need to go to library settings more library settings audience target and settings and you need to enable that box all right so you kind of need to do two places this one and the news web part after you do both after you do both uh, let me show you how this will work so let's navigate uh, back to our, uh, um, you know, site. So I want to target this announcement to maybe uh, certain employees, right? So you click on it. You click the uh, edit button, right? We want to update uh, our announcement. Page details uh, uh, over here. What you are going to see is an extra box now, all right? Uh, this box would not appear unless you enable audience targeting in those two places I just told you about. And if you leave this box blank, you uh, will uh, pretty much the announcement will be visible by everyone. But if I specify the security group, and in my case, I mean, let's just say, you know, this is the security group uh, targeting certain employees. So if I if you leave it blank, it will be visible by everyone. If you uh, leave it, if you type in the security groups here, these are only the people in this particular security group will get to see that announcement. All right. So let me update the news after that. And um, yeah, the announcement obviously still appears for me because I'm part of that group. But uh, to give you an, a, an example, you can, um, you know, you can uh, target different sets of employees, or maybe you have security groups by people residing in different countries. Uh, essentially, uh, yeah, uh, if I log in and I'm not part of a particular security group, I will not see that announcement in the news widget in the news web part. So pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, and the final thing I think I want to show you about the news web part, if you scroll all the way down, all right, uh, so by default, the news appear in reverse chronological order. So as you keep adding news, they just appear on top and then the old one will drop off. Guess what? You can also organize news. You can also create your own order if you want. So you click uh, this organize news and look at this. I can actually drag and drop into the custom order. So for example, you know what? Like I want this news article no matter what to be uh, number one, all right? Just like that. 
and this will be in position number two. So let me see. Let me try to drag it. Here we go. Just like that. So you can always change the order manually, all right? If you don't want to rely on, you know, just um, uh, the regular chronological order, you can do that. And let me uh, let me now. Yeah, I think we're done with all the settings. Let me uh, republish and look at this now. Right, my other article appears on top. All right. So um, so that's all I think I wanted to show you about this particular um, you know news web port. Quite a lot of uh, configuration options. Um, uh, and as you build your sites, uh, once again, I just totally love the fact that you can uh, change the styles, you can display or you know uh, hide certain information, uh, you can change the order, you can pull the information from various you know resources. So lots and lots of uh, great options. So let's now uh, switch uh, gears a little bit. And uh, the third uh, web part I want to introduce you to is uh, the events uh, web part. And just to show you what it looks like, uh, this is it right here. All right, this is it right here. Essentially, uh, it's a calendar web part that you can uh, you can uh, add uh, to your uh, you know to your SharePoint site. Let me um, do that for you. So you click the edit button. And um, you know, let's add the web part. So uh, now you are going to find two web parts that are kind of similar, uh, you know, right in terms of meaning, uh, but they're different. The one I want to, um, the one where I'm going to show you right now is the events web part. We also have this group calendar web part. Now the group calendar web part is actually for situations when remember those team sites I showed you you um you can pretty much um you know when you create a team site it creates a group calendar an outlook calendar behind the scenes and you can display that group calendar on your site let me quickly show it to you so i have it here here is my team site and what you see here is actually a group calendar web part uh, so when i added this web part it added uh, essentially it embeds an outlook calendar uh, inside of my SharePoint, you know, page. That's not the web part I want to show you. All right, we are talking about more of a SharePoint, you know, based calendar, not the Outlook based calendar. Perhaps this is a topic for another video. So um, just wanted to highlight the differences between the two. The group calendar is the Outlook group calendar uh, that you already have and maintain and can just embed in uh, on your, you know, SharePoint pages, typically team, you know, sites. Uh, the one we uh, want to uh, add to our page uh, today is the events one. And the events, uh, let me add it, all right, and let's just say, I don't know, calendar, all right, well, that's what we will call it. And uh, let me republish it. Now, what this is, this is a strictly a SharePoint, uh, you know, kind of type of calendar. Uh, the events here do not leave in Outlook. They do not sync with Outlook, all right? The events you add here uh, would lit literally be just in SharePoint, all right, on that particular event list. Uh, so that's uh, very important to, to understand. So from maintenance perspective, right, you would need to maintain all of this in here. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and add an event, all right? and uh, company meeting, all right? And we'll choose the date, all right? Uh, let's just do it, something like that. The time, uh, what you see is what you get, all right? Not a lot of kind of options. Uh, what we can do here is add an image, all right? This will actually make it a little bit pretty uh, on the front end, all right? So uh, we'll just uh, add something like this, I guess, all right? Here we go, and it adds it as a header here, and we click uh, Save, all right? Uh, let me show you how that looks. This is it. This is it right here, all right? And essentially, all the events will show up uh, in here, uh, kind of in the chronological order. Uh, the old ones will drop off, all right? So if you have um, an event passed today, it's not going to show in here. And let's add another event just so that we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, some something to play with. All right, so we'll just uh, 
here we go. All right, just like that. And uh, let's add uh, some sort of image in here. All right, so it doesn't really matter. Here we go. And again, click Save. All right, perfect. So I have a few events now. Again, they show up in here. Um, now, uh, let's now, th 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 this is pretty much it, all right? What you see is what you get. So uh, now let's talk about limitations. So unfortunately, we have quite a few limitations. I love this web part, all right? I think it's a great addition, but uh, there are all these different uh, limitations. I mean, yeah, you can see this different views and whatever filters, but let's talk about some limitations. Uh, first. So first limitation is that um, obviously it resides in SharePoint, all right? Uh, it doesn't really interface with Outlook, all right? Um, if you just do this, add to my calendar, it just downloads this ICS. I mean, it doesn't automatically add anything to your calendar. You have to do everything manually, so it's not kind of the most user-friendly thing. Uh, the second uh, limitation uh, so a common ask is usually to add like a calendar view, you know, like the monthly or weekly view. Well, unfortunately, one does not exist. Uh, actually, it does exist, but you're not going to like it. Let me show you. So let me show you what this widget actually looks like. All right. So this is what it looks like to our users. But let me show you what it looks like uh, from behind the scenes. So gear icon, site contents. And you're going to see it right here. All right, just like that. You see events, two events that we added. Let's click. And this is what you're going to see. This is what you're going to see. This is the actual you know, events that I added just now. Now, um, it looks quite different, right? It is a monthly view, but it looks quite different. Why? This is what a SharePoint uh, you know, calendar used to look like for many, many years, all right? And what you actually see uh, on the front end is kind of the modernized uh, version of it. However, the back end, if you will, this monthly view never got uh, modernized. All right, so this is what essentially it looks like, unfortunately, and it's pretty disconnected as you can see experience. I cannot even go back easily to my homepage and it looks kind of outdated. Um, it looks like it was created 10 years ago, which actually it was. Um, but uh, long story short, uh, the you know, the while the monthly view, the calendar view does exist, uh, unfortunately, you know, it's not compatible with modern experience. So that's the unfortunate reality. Uh, another big limitation that we have here uh, that we had for uh, quite uh, some time, you can cannot add a recurring events. All right, so if you had an event, let's say, I don't know, it's a monthly meeting of some sort, um, there is no way to make it a recurring. All right, so if uh, uh, I actually, um, in some cases, I have this web part been used for um, birthdays and anniversaries. And uh, while it's actually, in my opinion, it's a great one to use, it does not allow for those recurring, right? You know, which typically, you know, birthdays and anniversaries are, right? So, um, so yeah, unfortunately, that's uh, kind of a big uh, limitation. All right. Uh, now let's uh, go. Uh, let me show you some additional settings that are available. And uh, because I do want to uh, leave this events web part uh, on a positive note, so I'm going to click pencil. So we do have quite a few options um, available here as well. So first of all, just like with news, we can uh, change the you know the source. We can actually aggregate. That's another cool thing. Let's say you have an internet and everyone like maintains their own little calendar, all right, and you want to aggregate it all uh, on the, you know, main site, uh, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, once again, this is, remember, it works exactly the same way as with, uh, you know, with uh, the news widget, all right? You can actually specify the date range, how far you want to, to show the events, you know, maybe for this month or next few weeks, all right? Um, so uh, we have layout options, I guess, you know, yeah, depending on the, let me move it. So maybe we have a little bit more options. Yeah, here we go. You see, because I moved it, this web part to a larger area of the screen, right? Uh, you know, so it's not a three column, a one column. It's a little bit different layout and I can actually configure it quite a bit uh, here as well. And uh, yeah, I guess we can specify how many 
uh, how many um, you know how many events to show. We also have an uh, audience targeting. Remember uh, audience targeting um, I showed you on the news widget. Uh, it works the same way, right? I'm not going to demonstrate it now, but it works the same way. You enable audience targeting. All right, and um, you can then say, you know what, this uh, maybe a company barbecue is for people who uh, who reside in U.S. All right, and uh, and then certain events will only be visible by certain people, certain employees uh, from your uh, organization. All right, so um, let me move it back. So I think that's all I wanted to mention um, about the events, you know, web part. Unfortunately, there are those few limitations. Now, there are different ways to walk around those limitations. Um, another way to build a calendar would be to create a custom list and create a, a calendar view. I actually have instructions on how to do that uh, in one of my uh, videos on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, uh, for the purpose of today's demonstration, um, you know, this is the, you know, one of the most popular widgets, web parts uh, still, because everyone has events, right? Uh, you need to track some sort of events and you want uh, those events to be visible to the rest of the organization. The fourth web part I would like to introduce you to happens to be also uh, one of my uh, favorite web parts and definitely, definitely uh, a staple uh, on many SharePoint sites, department sites, and the internet portal, something called uh, Quick Links. So uh, let me first show it to you. Uh, here we go. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see uh, this uh, Quick Links web part. That's what it's called. You can see it in action. Essentially, this links to uh, other content, other content uh, that you might have on your site or externally somewhere. Uh, let me show you another variation of it. Okay, just look a little bit different, I guess. Uh, so let me uh, show you what this uh, quick links are uh, all about. Uh, now, um, in the beginning, I uh, introduced you to the hero web part, right? And again, it was kind of the same concept, but the you know the hero web part uh, you know it's uh, for something that really you need to catch attention to and uh, obviously you know you have this nice looking images and links but the hero web part does take a bit of uh, uh, real estate. Um, however, if you have let's say you have I don't know 10, 15 links and you want to organize them nicely. I mean obviously hero web part is not going to be a good fit because you can only have five tiles and they take uh, like half of the page already. So in our case, we're going to add a quick links uh, web part. Uh, let me uh, show it to you. It also, um, you know, is a pretty configurable uh, web part. So um, I'm editing the page. And actually that's what it's called, quick links, all right? Uh, you can't miss it. Um, just like that, type in the name if you want to type the name. Let me add it. And um, yeah, this header is optional, all right? So whatever we want to um, um, you know, specify here. And essentially, yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you just, um, you just uh, add the links. They could be to maybe something inside of your organization, maybe some pages or uh, you know what? Uh, once again, I'm going to uh, link to one of my articles on my blog. Here we go, uh, just like that. You can do that, uh, or you know you can link. Um, yeah, let me. Sh I will show you some additional settings later. But let me uh, let me um, maybe link. Uh, you know what? I'll link to uh, that little announcement I created. All right. So we can do that too. All right. Uh, just like that. Uh, now, uh, what's cool here is that um, you know. Let me now talk about some additional uh, settings that are available for this particular uh, for this particular uh, widget, uh, this particular web part. So first of all, so when you add an announcement or add any link, it kind of extracts some information. So you might already have some text, maybe even an icon, but you can customize everything. So just like we could customize each individual tile with Hero. A web part, we can do the same here. So I'm going to customize this, um, you know, this announcement. Uh, I'll just say something like that. All right, I can alter the text. Uh, I also want to change the image. You can upload your own image, or I usually go for the stock icon. So when you click on the library uh, radio button, 
Uh, this actually like stock, you know, icons that uh, you have from Microsoft. So, uh, and you know what, let's just uh, do something like this. Here we go, right? Welcome new employee. So probably this makes sense. Here we go, all right? So uh, yeah, um, lots of, um, uh, you know, uh, lots of options here. Now, um, if you need to change the link, you can do so here. And this, I actually like this, all right? So by default, uh, this is a recent addition to this web part, but um, by default, when you click on the link, it will open it up in, in the same window. But you know what? I want to open it in the other uh, window, all right? Another tab, uh, I should say, and you can control that behavior here, all right? And once again, I made uh, the change, so make sure to uh, republish, and uh, this is what it will look like now, all right? Uh, now, uh, let me cover some additional settings, just like news web part, just like calendar web part, um, quick links um, has, uh, you know, a web part has some amazing additional capabilities, additional settings, so you can really kind of configure it uh, and customize it um, uh, to your own taste. So let let me show you that. Click Edit button again. Once again, we uh, click on the web part. We click on the pencil icon, and uh, some additional settings here. So um, I actually utilize this layout options quite a bit. So first of all, yeah, you can change the different styles, as you can see. All right. So we can actually have a simple list. All right, and uh, we can also have those buttons. Uh, we can control, once again, some of these options uh, have some additional settings. I want this layout, you know, one line, and I can control the, I guess, the uh, layer alignment of the text, and I can even control the, you know, the color in here, all right? Uh, but let me show you something else that I actually like uh, about this particular web part. You can actually see it. Uh, let me see. I think I have an example on one. Yeah, right here. You see, I have a link to vacation request, and then I have some additional text. How do we uh, how do we add this? Uh, let me show you. So what you want to do, and you only have it available on certain layouts, all right? Uh, I think the list and the buttons have it. Yeah, you see here, show descriptions. So when you click this, uh, enable this uh, toggle radio button, all right? Um, you get much wider, uh, you know, uh, experience, I guess, space in here. And um, what you can do now, you can click on the pencil icon, all right? And um, for those layouts that utilize it, you see I can add additional text in here, all right? We have a new addition to our uh, company. All right, so I'm just going to do something like this, all right? And essentially, it's a support text. Maybe uh, it might be useful, right? Let's say you have, um, you know, I don't know, a link to the form or something, right? Microsoft form or something else. Uh, you can actually provide some additional text because the real estate is kind of limit limited in here, uh, but wanted to show you that particular capability. Uh, let me show you something else. And um, I think for that, I will need to drag it in here just like that. Uh, let me um, show you some other layouts. So yeah, you can change all these different layouts in here. And uh, one of my favorite is also this grid one, all right? So uh, sometimes, you know, those I, this uh, quick links, they're kind of too small, hard to uh, visualize and read, right? And the hero is kind of too big, all right? Uh, this is kind of the middle ground, uh, this grid layout, as you can see. Uh, it just allows, you know, maybe if you have uh, not maybe 55 links, but, you know, 5, 10 links, you can actually build uh, those nice kind of square boxes and, um, you know, and have a much nicer kind of experience in here. All right. And uh, one last thing about the uh, quick links, just like news, just like uh, events, you can set up audience targeting. All right. And uh, uh, in this case, right, in this case, um, yeah, uh, remember I enabled it here. So let me show you. You need to enable it globally for the whole web part, and then you need to navigate to each and every announcement, and you get, just like with news, just like with events, you get that extra box. If you leave it empty, the link will be visible to everyone. Uh, if you start specifying, um, I don't know, uh, specific security groups, right? Uh, you know, you can uh, you can actually um, limit it to certain audiences, and it might be handy. It might be handy. Let me just give you a use case. I mean, maybe 
you have an employee handbook, right? And maybe you have a version for uh, US employees and a version for European, right, employees or Canadian employees. So you obviously, you might post all three links, but you only want, you know, uh, the proper handbook to be shown to proper people, all right? So uh, this would be a, a pretty cool uh, use case uh, for, um, you know, for uh, essentially audience targeting on uh, quick links. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, you know, I always, you know, as you design your sites and pages, uh, all depends on the content. Sometimes you might uh, proceed with different, uh, you know, layouts, uh, uh, but uh, definitely one of the most uh, frequently uh, utilized uh, web parts, the quick links uh, web part. Uh, web part number five, I want to introduce you to um, quite popular as well. Obviously, it depends on your use case, but uh, it's uh, the countdown timer web part, all right? Um, you can see it in action here. Anytime you have a deadline of some sort, uh, you can uh, you can actually, um, um, you know, add, uh, add one to your SharePoint pages. And in my opinion, it just makes it a little bit more fresh, right? uh and uh useful so um let's uh make it happen so uh let's click the edit button let's add the web part that's what it's called by the way right uh, countdown timer you just uh you know type in the name or find it in the list countdown timer all right and uh it could be right maybe uh, uh some sort of uh, human resources deadline or maybe everyone needs to submit uh, their vacations by certain date or something right you want to remind everyone and let me show you a few uh, configuration options so uh there are not that many but compared to other widgets but let me show you a few uh, i'm going to click on the uh, you know, pencil icon. So this is where you set, this is where you set uh, the date. By the way, it could be in the future or in the past. All right, uh, for example, let, let, let me give you a use case. I want everyone to submit, I'm going to set a date for the future, all right? I want to everyone to submit, um, uh, you know, something maybe, uh, you know, a form or something by this particular date, this particular time, all right? And you can even specify how you want the count down to display, all right? So minutes, even seconds, all right? Uh, let's add some additional, right? By default, when you add countdown timer, it's kind of just a bunch of white space, right? Uh, we can make it a little bit more exciting. So first of all, we can add a background image and uh, you can upload your own, but you know what? I'll just uh, proceed with one of the, you know, something that uh, makes sense, I guess, in our case, right? I'll just add the image of the you know, clock. All right, here we go. And you can actually change kind of the brightness here. All right, so feel free to play with those settings. And the most important thing is actually here. So, right, it's not just typically the deadline. You probably want people to do something, right? Maybe submit a form or do something. So call to action, call to action. And what you can do here is, you know, uh, let's say it was a form they need to fill out. Maybe you can paste the URL of the form, all right? Uh, let me let me actually just show it to you. Let's go to the actual uh, forms and let's uh, find, uh, yeah, I think I have it right here in the list. Here we go. So I'm going to actually embed the URL uh, of some form I have in here. All right, so I'm going to copy the link and uh, I don't know, register or something, all right? And the URL goes here, all right? Uh, so just like that, and let's republish it. And look at this now, let me show you, I pretty much yeah, added my deadline, the countdown, and when people click register, look at this, now it opens up whatever they need to fill out or whatever they need to do. So pretty, pretty powerful uh, in my opinion. Uh, let me show you something else. So um, the date doesn't have to be in the future. It could be in the past as well. And you might be wondering why do we need um you know the date in the in the past let me give you a scenario i actually had a few clients all right and uh i think for you know safety reasons they were 
you know, essentially counting up uh, the days since the last uh, incident uh, uh, within the manufacturing plant or something like that. So what you can do is set the date in the past. All right. So and essentially it will now count up. All right. So if you want to maybe say, you know, 37 days without a single incident at our uh, manufacturing plant or something, so you can utilize it uh, for the uh, count up as well, not just count down, even though it's called a countdown uh, timer uh, web bar. All right. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much it. I mean, nice and simple, um, simple, really simple web bar, but I think a great addition to perhaps your department sites, uh, maybe definitely some you know, main uh, internet sites um, if you want to kind of right, uh, spice up uh, your uh, your internet and make it a little bit more live and kind of exciting. Uh, the next web port I want to uh, introduce you to is is a simple one, all right, <laughs> compared to all the uh, other ones uh, we covered. So web port number six is the weather web port. And uh, yeah, here it is, nice and simple. And um, yeah, it's just another cool way to um, you know, to um, make your internet a little bit more relevant. Everyone needs to know the weather, right? So let's click the edit button and let's add this a widget. Um, and that's what it's called, weather, all right? And you can actually add multiple locations. So I am going to, um, um, you know, add a few locations. Here we go. All right, so um, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, my hometown. And uh, let's add another one. Let's say we are part of multi, you know, national corporation, right? Uh, we want to see, oh, look at this, almost uh, the same weather. Um, so I added London and maybe, uh, you know, but let's add something a little bit more uh, exciting. Uh, Miami, Florida. All right, much warmer. I like that. All right. Now, essentially, the, it pulls the information from MSN Weather, all right, Microsoft Weather, all right, uh, and uh, what you see is what you get, all right. Let me just republish it, and essentially, this is it, all right. This is it. It just pulls the weather from all these different locations. Uh, now, uh, let me show you a few, um, uh, I guess, well, a single setting you can configure here. Um, so first of all, you can uh, you can change you know uh, make some additional changes. You can change the order of this uh, by drag and drop, but you can also um, change the location. You see how it's pretty much a very long you know name over here. I I can just say you know uh, everyone knows where London is. I hope so. We can we can do that. All right. Uh, and uh, what else? Oh. Um, so uh, there are only two settings here. Uh, there are only two settings here, and uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And uh, you need to choose one by default, all right? Uh, but the good thing is the users will be able to switch, you know, between the two for per their personal, uh, you know, kind of view, all right? So you have to uh, do the uh, default, right? You have to pick one. All right. Unfortunately, uh, it's um, uh, you know the um, the whether it's displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit, right, is not going to be automatically displayed based on your properties, right, based on who whoever is logged in. So, for example, I reside in U.S. So, um, and if I have uh, users from Canada or Europe, they will also see Fahrenheit by default. Essentially, what you're setting up here is uh, the default setting. So let me leave it uh, like that. Or, you know what, let's switch to Celsius, for example. I'm going to uh, republish. So after I republish, by default, it shows me Celsius. And let's say somebody uh, from US logs in, right? And uh, they need to view it in Fahrenheit. Uh, you know, it's not going to automatically show it to them in Fahrenheit, all right? Um, uh, it's not even though I'm, you know, based in US and, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, my account profile in terms of regional settings states that I'm based in US, it's still going to display it in Celsius. However, what users can do is just click, it's kind of, I wish it was a little bit more um, obvious. You just click on the Celsius over here and look at this, you see? 
So even though the default setting, uh, even though the default setting, and it kind of stuck, I refreshed the page, which is good. Uh, the default uh, was Celsius. For me, I kind of set it to Fahrenheit. So you see the users can change it back and forth uh, quite easily and essentially, um, you know, and enjoy uh, that, uh, you know, enjoy those uh, particular unit types, right, um, uh, going forward. So this uh, is all about the weather uh, web part. I think it's uh, pro probably most appropriate, right, for the main sites. I, you might obviously you can add uh, those same uh, web parts to any of the department sites, but most likely, right, you will see it uh, on um, you know kind of the main sites, main home sites, and especially if you have multiple locations. Um, if you want other users to be envy of the weather in some other, you know, warmer location, you know, definitely utilize uh, the weather web bar. Uh, the next uh, web part, uh, web part number seven, I want to show you uh, kind of similar to the, uh, you know, weather widget. Uh, they go kind of hand in hand, um, the world clock web part. Um, this probably makes sense uh, once again if you have offices uh, all over the place, uh, which in our you know uh, in today's world many organizations do, uh, even the small ones. So let me click the edit button and let me add the vault clock, and that's exactly what it's you know called vault clock. And uh, you can yeah you can um, just uh, uh, set up uh, various locations. So once again. I'm going to add a few uh, locations here, and uh, essentially it just uh, adds the local, you know, time and those, uh, you know, specific uh, locations. That's all it does. All right. So, uh, and uh, let's add a few, uh, you know, more over here, just like that. All right. And I'm going to republish it. So yeah, I mean, what you see is what you get. Uh, just shows you the time in the local um, in that local time zone, and let's see what we have available in terms of the additional, uh, you know, settings. Um, so yeah, I mean, not a lot of settings available here. You can you see show the uh, day of the week or you know hide it and uh, choose the time format. This might be important, right? Obviously, in, you know, for European. Uh, locations, right? Uh, it's more of a European and military time, you know, format. But yeah, you can you can set all of that up. Uh, but other than that, you know, not a lot of uh, not a lot of options. Uh, but definitely, definitely a great uh, addition to any uh, internet uh, home, uh, you know, page. Essentially, the world clock uh, web bar. The next uh, web part I would like uh, to introduce you to uh, also happens, you know, to be uh, one of the most popular web parts uh, that you typically would add to your internet, uh, you know, pages to make uh, them a little bit more exciting and uh, visually appealing to the users. Uh, so obviously, video um, is a pretty popular type of content these days. Uh, and um, you might obviously as an organization have lots and lots of different videos, different, uh, you know, maybe meeting recordings, maybe some training videos, uh, kind of uh, human resources related instructional videos. Um, you might want to display those to your users. Uh, luckily, we have a nice way of doing so within the you know, SharePoint. So this actually used to work quite differently um, in the past, right? In the past, we, um, you know, had a separate uh, kind of stream application that was independent of kind of SharePoint and uh, it was like a company's YouTube channel in a way. Um, now with the recent migration of stream to um, SharePoint, all the videos now reside uh, just like documents in SharePoint, SharePoint and OneDrive, all right? Usually SharePoint. And um, essentially this allows uh, you uh, to easily display them on your SharePoint pages. Now, um, I actually uh, um, I wrote a number of articles about this whole Stream Classic and Stream on SharePoint thing and, uh, and um, what this is all about and how to migrate um, from the old to the new. Uh, you can check out my uh, blog in your spare time. But uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I want to explain to you how to, let's say, embed a video uh, on a SharePoint page. 
and it's actually quite a nice user experience. Uh, so first of all, let me show you what I did. I have a few videos here. And just like any other document, I uploaded them to the uh, document library here, but this are MP4 files. Uh, but obviously this is not a nice experience, right? I don't want my users to kind of navigate to the library and see a huge list of you know videos and folders in here. Uh, we are going to embed them on the page and let me do just that. So let me edit the page. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it here. Let's add it in the center of the page. So you click plus sign. And um, first of all, you, if your video is hosted uh, on YouTube, you can actually um, add it by supplying the YouTube link here. All right, nice and convenient. But uh, the assumption we're going to proceed under is that you know your video, you have the actual video uh, in your SharePoint. So right here, this is the web part you want to use, stream. All right, and um, you, now you need to change uh, to choose the source. You click the pencil icon, and a few configuration options here. So first of all, you select videos on the site, a given folder or a library or a single video. Uh, let me just show you. Let's start with a single video first. Uh, that's going to be simple. Uh, you see, it actually uh, went ahead and kind of gave me the recent videos I uploaded, but uh, you can pull uh, them from any way you have. I already have them on my site. So you know what? I'm going to uh, add this video of this nice looking cat. And here, remember, it's a single video, so uh, that's what I'm adding. And here it is. Let me republish it. And um, yeah, it's a nice experience for the users. They can easily play this video uh, with sound and everything uh, right from uh, the SharePoint you know, page. As you can see, it's almost like this YouTube style experience where you, know, you can pause, you can fast forward. So um, if you uh, click on the video, you can actually like and comment. So it's almost like YouTube, all right? So it's a nice experience for the users. Uh, let me uh, show you something else. Uh, in addition to single video, you know what? I'm going to maybe add uh, in here uh, just so that we have a little bit more real estate. And uh, this time I'm going to go for, remember I have those videos in that library right here. All right, so I'm going to go for all the videos in that library. All right, so let's say I have 10 uh, training videos I want you uh, to show you. And what happens, you see it embeds them all, all right? And uh, so I selected my source and I guess we can change the style. I kind of like this one, all right? We can say how many we display, all right? So let's just, yeah, you see how many does we display. Let's just keep it whatever. Uh, how many rows, you can control that. Uh, if you want to sort by any particular order, um, yeah, but this, is what allows you to kind of select multiple videos. And I guess you have this one big video for the video selection and then, you know, it appears on top and then all the other ones as appear as smaller thumbnails. Or you can go for this option, right? And then let's republish and look at this. Uh, it's a nice user experience, right? Again, I just, um, when you click on the video, it kind of expands it. Very nice, uh, absolutely uh, love this user experience. I think in my opinion, Microsoft did an awesome job uh, with this particular, you know, kind of setup and this particular web part. And yeah, you can uh, you can just uh, click on the users can just click and view all these videos and uh, view them in a much larger format. And they can like and you know comment things as you can see. All right, uh, just like that. All right, so uh, very very uh, nice uh, user experience uh, for the users. So uh, that's all. I mean, at the moment, at least, uh, I'm pretty sure that um, uh, Microsoft will keep adding additional functionalities uh, with the recent transition to a SharePoint. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are lots and lots of improvements that will be made to this, you know, to the video capabilities and this particular web part. Uh, but definitely, if you have the videos, you can uh, add them, um, uh, you know, to your pages and make them a little bit more uh, user friendly. Let me show you one other thing related to the videos. It's actually uh, quite uh, a nice functionality. Um, what I'm about to show you is uh, kind of a, a cross between the video, the stream capability, and that hero web part. Remember that hero web part I showed you in the beginning uh, of a presentation of the video today? Uh, what you can do, remember, um, 
by default, these are like static images with links behind them. However, it doesn't have to be that way. You can actually, instead of a given tile with an image, you can actually embed a video in here. Let me show you the trick. So what you need to do, you don't actually rely on the stream web part, all right? Uh, but you do rely on the video file itself. Let me show you. So what you need to do is navigate to the video. So let's say I want to add this video. I'm going to copy the link to this video. And you know what? I'm going to generate a view only link, right? I don't want my users to change anything about that video. So I'll just be careful with that. So here we go. I just copied the link. Next, I'm going to navigate to my hero web port. So I'm ed editing and I want, you know, I just added like a default page here, whatever, right? I'm going to change this to the video. So I'm going to click the pencil icon and the URL I want to change from the page or whatever the link is, all right, change. And I'm going to paste the link of that video file, all right, that I generated. And let's see what happens. Look at this. Let me republish. And look, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, so I have my tiles and one of the tiles is a video that I added. So let me play it. It's a very nice user experience. Again, it actually expands that particular video and you know plays it. All right, here we go, all right in that window. And when I close it, it goes back you know, to kind of smaller screen. So yeah, the hero web part doesn't have to be all the images and you know and links. It could be just a video, uh, maybe from the recent uh, town hall meeting or uh, an important uh, instructional video. You can add it right here, so it's right front and center, uh, and all the employees get to see it right away when they visit your site. So I think that's all I wanted to mention about uh, this particular stream web part. Definitely very popular web part these days with uh, you know videos being the one of the most popular types of content so definitely if you have the videos uh, feel free to uh, feel free to add them to uh, your internet pages uh, the next web part i want to introduce you to uh, is viva uh, engage or yammer or web part as we used to call it in the past right they just changed the name from yammer to Viva engage now um this web part is pretty interesting so uh all these web parts i covered so far you know typically they you know right no matter whether you're a small or large organization you know typically there is a place for news and events and links in any uh any of those organizations the Viva engage web part uh, you know, obviously makes sense if you do use uh, Viva uh, Engage, all right? Uh, just to remind you what Viva Engage or Yammer is, uh, let me uh, navigate to uh, the Viva Engage. And uh, I don't see it on the list. I guess we'll find it through the search right here. Oh, engage, perfect. All right. Viva Engage is your company's social uh, network, all right? So um, it's think of it as almost like the closest analogy would be like Facebook groups, all right? Uh, unlike Teams, you know, so Teams is typically for the project stuff, right? You know, the day-to-day -day stuff. The um, the Yammer communities or Viva Engage communities, as I should call them, are for kind of informal conversations um you know um, among your employees something that doesn't have to do maybe with projects right a typical use case could be maybe a human resources community where hr just has this informal conversation so maybe um ceo right an informal town hall right where um ceo for example might want to chat with employees and uh, and essentially um uh, you know, hold uh, those informal conversations. Now, uh, I do see Viva Engage being more popular in large organizations. If you have, I don't know, 20, 50, even a few hundred people, in all honesty, this might be a bit of overhead, right, uh, for you to maintain. Uh, and in those cases, I think the teams, you know, would be sufficient. But for large organization, when we are getting into hundreds and definitely thousands of users, I have, I, I, I do work with some larger clients as well. 
And um, um, I do have great use cases uh, for utilizing Viva uh, Engage. And essentially, this is where thousands of employees can um, uh, can essentially have uh, those uh, uh, informal conversations, right? Uh, a good use case, for example, I have uh, one client and they have SharePoint community of practice, right? This is where they exchange, uh, you know, and uh, post questions about SharePoint, right? So uh, kind of an internal uh, knowledge base in a way, all right? Now, um, that this was kind of a high level overview of Viva Engage. Uh, but um, what I want to show you is the Viva Engage uh, web part. Now, a common ask, usually is to make um uh you know to make internet a little bit more social and exciting all right and uh typically uh you know typically i mean the internet is more of a static repository right if you edit you know the page and you add all of this different you know types of content there is not you know much in terms of social well there's pretty much nothing available in terms of social aspect if i want to comment on on something or um you know um you know or like a certain content right there's no way for me to do it like i can do on social media now there is there is a feature that exists uh in sharepoint on sharepoint pages uh, which is this right here uh, comments pages i actually recorded uh, a video on that in the past on my uh, youtube channel uh this does allow users to uh you know mention people and and um you know, like uh, or comment on, you know, individual pages and posts. But this is pretty, um, you know, pretty basic, all right? Uh, pretty basic and uh, essentially doesn't uh, allow for much of social collaboration. Doesn't have all this bells and whistles you would expect on social, you know, media these days, all right? So uh, with that being said, a common ask is to make uh, SharePoint a little bit more social. and one of the ways to make SharePoint more social is to add a Viva Engage community to the page, all right? And one of the ways, uh, essentially, um, the only, I, I should say, option uh, to make it social would be to add those Viva Engage communities. You cannot embed Teams conversations into SharePoint pages. The only um, conversations you can embed are those from a Viva Engage. So let me show you how to do that. And uh, I just edited the page. Let's add, uh, let's add the Viva Engage right here. It's called Conversations. That's the name of the web part, by the way. All right. And um, uh, yeah, there are different. You can embed a particular community. Uh, you can embed, um, you know, conversations based on specific topic. But most likely, most likely, you will uh, add a specific um, uh, kind of community. Now, we do have to specify a specific community we want to add. Let's just say, I don't know, let's just add this uh, one of the communities I'm part of. And you can filter. All right, not a lot of uh, options, but you know, you can filter either for all conversations or the questions. Remember how you can, you know, have different types of, um, uh, you know, different types of, uh, uh, you know, I guess, uh, discussions here, you know, uh, questions, praises, polls. So, yeah, you can choose uh, between those here. And, uh, yeah, number of conversations you want to display uh, just like that. Not a lot of, not a lot of, um, you know, I guess configuration options. So let me republish it. Uh, but what's cool here is that um, not only it embeds uh, the this particular community uh, on a SharePoint page, you can also pretty much hold conversations from here. All right. So here we go. I'm posting, um, you know, the message here, just like that. And here we are. And people can like and, um, uh, you know, comment. Uh, without going to that particular community. So they can either navigate, obviously they can either uh, navigate to that, to the Viva Engage and specific community and um, essentially, uh, and essentially uh, chat in here, or they can do so right from the convenience of the SharePoint page. So uh, that's another way uh, to uh, spice it up a little bit 
Uh, so some of those templates, remember some of those templates you saw, uh, uh, you know, in the beginning, right, when we created the site, they already contain the Yammer community, the Viva Engage community. Um, you know, I, once again, I probably see you adding this if you're part of a large organization, but um uh, obviously um obviously uh, if you're part of large organization you might benefit from uh this uh, being on your front uh you know kind of home page uh, home site so that was viva engage definitely a nice way to spice up your um you know your internet or department um uh, landing page if you're part of a large organization The final uh, web part, web part number 10, uh, that I really like and I see on many internet, SharePoint internet portals, is the image gallery. That's another cool way to spice up your internet. So let me show you how that works. Actually, before I show it to you, just want to kind of explain the setup. So uh, I have created this uh, new document library. All right. So I went in and I created a special document library for photos. Here we go. All right, and that's where my images are. All right, and just to show you, you know, these are all the different nice looking images, just like that. And what I want to do, I want to display them all on my page. All right, so there are different ways to do so. So let me show you how this image gallery web part works. So again, edit the page. And let me scroll all the way down. All right, and uh, the web part you want to use. So first of all, uh, they're right next to each other. The image is just a single image you want to add, all right? But in our case, I want to add uh, multiple images. So you need to go for image gallery. That's what it's uh, called. And you can select images. So let me, you know what? I'll proceed with this first option first. So I'm going to add images on the fly. Now you can upload them, but you know what? I'm going to, uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'll just select uh, a few images here, just like that. Here we go. And yeah, this looks really cute. I'm going to add all of these images, all right? So I uh, want to show you, I guess, a few options while we're here. Uh, I added some images. Obviously, you can upload your own on the fly. And uh, yeah, you can change the styles, I guess. And you have you can have this carousel. That's another popular thing. Remember how we could cycle through the news? Uh, all right, uh, we can do the same with uh, images. All right, so I want to all the images to cycle maybe every few seconds, uh, just like that. You will be able, so this will be like um, um, the slideshows, right? Uh, you get to see on the internet. Um, so uh, they will appear, the users will be able to manually, uh, you know, click through or it will cycle through uh, automatically. All right. Uh, let me republish, let me uh, show, let's just see how that works. So here we go, this what you see is what you get, all right? Yeah, it just uh, yeah, gives you that nice image, maybe from the last company party or something like that, all right? So, uh, and then let me show you something else. So typically, typically, right, you would already have the images somewhere. Uh, remember that I had uh, them organized in my photos uh, library. So uh, let's go ahead and add another image gallery. All right, and this time I'm going to, I don't want to upload, I already uploaded my images to that library. So I'm going to dynamically display them from a document library, all right? So if you did your homework already, you just choose the library. In my case, remember I have a special library for photos and you can include subfolders. Now, remember maybe you organize your photos by different dates or events, right? You want to pull them all from that particular maybe all these folders uh, you might need to do this checkbox in my case i don't have any folders and other than that uh yeah uh, same options right in terms of the different styles and um, in this case i'm pulling the images from the document library and what's cool about this option is that it's dynamic right so as you have more events as you have uh additional photos to share, right? You just navigate to that library and that image gallery uh, will display them, you know, essentially uh, will dynamically display them uh, for you from that library. Uh, other than that, not a lot of options. I mean, very important thing though, uh, when you do display the images, they have to reside on that site. Remember uh, when I 
kind of did this, it's um, it's essentially showing you all the libraries you have on your site. So uh, you cannot really pull, you know, pull the photos from another site. So you have to be on that same site where you're displaying them. Uh, but other than that, uh, just a nice way to, again, uh, spice up your uh, internet, uh, you know, po uh, portal and make it a little bit more exciting and visually appealing. So that was the uh, last web part I wanted to cover in this video web part. Uh, number, um, you know, number 10, the image gallery web bar. So I just covered uh, um, uh, what are, in my opinion, the top 10 web ports uh, for company internet portals. Now, uh, before we finish this video, I wanted to share some additional kind of thoughts uh, with you related to the, to the internet portal. So obviously I just covered 10 web ports uh, but there are so many more web parts. So what I encourage you to do, if you are the owner of the site, just edit the page uh, and um, essentially see what's out there. See what's out there. A lot of these web parts are pretty self-explanatory uh, and you can essentially uh, try them out uh, and see what's uh, you know what's possible, what else uh, what else is available. Uh, for example, you know sometimes you maybe want to add call to action, right? Write a button. Uh, there are widgets for that. Uh, there are web parts for that. Uh, text, right? I mean I know it's pretty primitive, but you know in some cases you might want to add some text, uh, write a description or something. You can uh, do that. So um, while I did not cover those web parts in uh, today's video. Uh, um, there are other web parts that are available, and I do encourage you to uh, check them out and just see what's available uh, out there and see what's uh, relevant to your uh, internet portal. Uh, the other two places I wanted to share with you in terms of um, you know, evaluating what's available and what's possible in SharePoint uh, out of the box in terms of the um, internet you know, portals look and feel and the site look and feel, uh, I wanted to share a few options with you. So the first option, remember, when uh, in the beginning of the uh, video we created a site, I kind of went in, you know, for the simple, right, uh, look and feel, and we had all these other templates. Well, guess what? First of all, if let's say you are starting to work on a site, you have no idea, um, you know, you have no idea how to build it, maybe don't have enough time, you do have a second chance, right? And um, if you click on gear icon, apply a site template, uh, you are going to see all the same templates that you saw in the beginning when you created the site. So initially we went for this, um, you know, for this, um, you know, standard communication type of site, right? But you can go ahead and overwrite all of it with all of those templates once again. So for example, let's say, you know what, I'm building uh, an HR site or uh, some, uh, I don't know, company internet site. And you know what, I just want to go with one of those. You can overwrite it. Now, keep in mind, uh, it's not going to delete anything uh, that you created, but it's going to override it. Like all these pages will be kind of uh, in a shadow, the ones you customize and created, and it will install a, a bunch of other uh, pages and images that you uh, that come as part of this template. All right, so uh, very um, you know very important to understand that concept. And unfortunately, unfortunately, once you um, once you let's say install this template, there is no easy way to kind of undo this. All right, you kind of have to go back and manually delete all this other stuff, all these extra pages and images that Microsoft uh, added for you. All right. So something extremely important. That's why I don't like uh, starting with those, all right? Uh, but, you know, again, this is an option. This is an option, at least at least if you want to see what's possible and what's uh, available uh, from the look and feel perspective, all right? So you can do that, use template, and then it will overwrite whatever you did on your uh, uh, site and will essentially install uh, a particular specific look and feel uh, or right on your site. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know what? Uh, since we're done with this, uh, you know, with this uh, ten web parts, let me do that. Let me show you what actually happens when you install uh, one of these templates. So uh, here we go. I'm going. Let's proceed with this HR example, for example. Right. 
I'll just say use template. It does take a few seconds, not a lot, but it does install all the images and you know, videos on the pages. And you're going to see what will happen to our page that we created today. I'll go behind the scenes and explain to you once it finishes uh, the installation. So here we go. I just finished the installation. All right, uh, just took a few seconds. And look at this. Essentially, remember, we had a different navigation menu overwritten. We have a completely different page here. Everything has been overwritten. All right. Now, uh, all of the stuff we created is not lost. If we go to site contents, site pages, look at this. It installed all these extra pages that, you know, came in with a template. It just, you know, our page is still here. Our page is still here, but it took the other one and kind of made it the new home page. All right. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't delete what you, uh, what you created. It just kind of pushes it, uh, you know, in the, you know, it's in the shadow, I guess, in the background and, um, you can still access it. You can still access it right here, but, uh, you kind of have to do it manually. All right. But again, everything, everything, uh, that you created will be kind of uh, pushed in the background and will be overridden. Uh, by uh, the template, all right? But, you know, again, you know, if you are, you know, building a site for, let's say, HR and want to you know, utilize this as a starting point, maybe change same images you have, you do have a nice starting point, all right? Now, uh, the other option available to you is SharePoint Lookbook. If you go to lookbook.microsoft.com, just you know, Google it or type the address lookbook.microsoft.com. You will end up here, all right. And this is uh, pretty much a it's a much larger uh, database, a much larger list of templates available for SharePoint out of the box, all right. And these are pre-made templates. And again, these are the same templates that we saw on your SharePoint site. All right, it just here we have a much larger selection, and they organize it by different uh, by different uh, I guess category here. So let's say again I'm building a department site. All right, so we have again one for retail, one for HR, uh, you know marketing, and so on. We have all these different scenarios uh, for different use cases. So let's say I picked one of the, uh, you know, templates in here that I really like. You know what? I'm going to install this one, Global Sales Hub. Um, now, um, you select it. Uh, first of all, you kind of see a preview of what's available here. Uh, you see all the stuff will be uh, included in the template and will be installed in your environment. All right, so all these images, all these web ports, uh, this video, I guess, you know, all these images, web ports. If uh, there was a Viva Engage web port, it would be installed in here as well. It actually tells you over here on the left hand side uh, what are the features, what are the web ports that are used and will be installed, and the content, and the content, all right. Uh, actually, this one is super important. I guess you're not getting just one site, you are getting. Um, uh, you know, uh, additional sites here, all right, because it's kind of going to be a hub, all right, so it's doing more than just a site. So you really have to be careful with, you know, sometimes it might install just one site and uh, just a bunch of images. Sometimes it might be multiple, uh, you know, sites uh, that are installed in your uh, environment. I think this one I remember uh, is uh, also, uh, I believe it's under departments. Yeah, this HR hub. Uh, you have to be careful. You're not getting just one site, uh, all right? It installs, it tells you over here, uh, multiple uh, multiple sites, all right? So you're getting more than you probably wish for, all right? <laughs> um, so, but yeah, let's say you like one of those templates, but here's the deal. Remember how with this apply a site template thing, right? Um, you just had to click on gear icon and you kind of, you know, could do it yourself. Ooh, I guess... Uh, we need to refresh it to uh, for it to work. Let's try it again. So um, yeah, the bottom line is this uh, apply a site uh, apply a site template uh, option is um, available to you, the site owner. If you want to install one of um, the templates from the lookbook, you have to be the tenant admin. It actually tells you right here. And if you are a SharePoint admin, that's not enough. 
first of all, if you are the site owner, that's not enough. But even if you are SharePoint admin, have SharePoint admin role, that's not enough. You have to be a Microsoft 365 global admin. And then you just uh, follow the prompts. And um, the reason for that is because the instructions, as you can see, it actually points to the instruction. The, you know, um, it's not as simple as installing just a template, you know, through apply uh, site template option. So you do need to kind of know what you're doing and you do need to, to have proper admin rights. So if you like um, any of those templates, you will need to work with your IT to, to have them available in your uh, environment. Uh, so, but, you know, I always recommend to my clients, uh, even though I personally don't like installing, uh, the templates, um, you, you know, in clients environments because they install a lot of stuff that the client usually typically doesn't need. I, my philosophy is that, you know, we should start from scratch and base, um, the content and the, you know, web parts based on the specific, um, you know, content that you have. All right. Uh, but, you know, I still recommend uh, that my clients go here. Why? Because it just shows you the possibilities. It shows you the possibilities of what's possible out of the box, you know, and uh, the different layouts, the different types of widgets, different types of web parts. And uh, it's definitely a nice way, um, you know, for, uh, for organizations, uh, for users who are not familiar maybe with, um, uh, you know, with uh, SharePoint and new to SharePoint. Uh, to at least be familiar with what's possible and what uh, their SharePoint internet uh, might uh, look like. So uh, that's all I really wanted to mention in this particular uh, video. Um, don't uh, forget to uh, like and subscribe uh, to my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, one last thing I want to uh, show you. So uh, I obviously configure internet portals uh, for my clients. Uh, so obviously, hopefully with this video, you have enough information and enough instruction to create your own, you know, internet or department site and utilize some of the web parts I showed you today. However, if you have um, any difficulty, you don't have enough time, uh, I do build internet portals for my clients, have been doing it for many, many years. And if you navigate to my site and click on internet portal, or you just click uh, on the homepage, and I scroll down over here, Internet Portal is one of the services I provide. And uh, I build lots and lots of Internet Portals for uh, my clients, uh, small or large, and I do so on a flat fee basis. You can actually see the actual pricing uh, and the actual timeline duration uh, for those projects. Um, I build everything out of the box, all right? Uh, that's my philosophy. I never utilize any third party uh, web parts. I never utilize any third party themes. Essentially, uh, my philosophy is that um, SharePoint has enough functionality and, and enough exciting uh, look and feel options out of the box. And uh, if you need assistance with building the internet portal uh, for your organization, nice looking home you know, site, you know, department sites, I do uh, build um, those internet portals uh, uh you know for my clients all the time and uh, i do so like i said on a flat fee arrangement my uh my internet portals include you know a, a to z uh you know configuration essentially white glove uh, service you know i configure all the sites for you i configure the look and feel navigation security and the training this is the most important aspect of uh the internet portals the training uh once i build the internet portal uh, I always joke with my clients that I don't want to hear from you again. And the reason for that is because my goal is to build the internet portal, you know, for you, uh, give you a starting point, uh, give you a baseline and, uh, you know, train your staff. All right. And from that point on your site owners, your department owners, uh, will have, um, uh, you know, you know, will be able to maintain their uh where their own little sites themselves and alter the look and feel, uh, feel and alter the you know the content uh, change and update content as necessary so should you need any assistance um feel free to reach out i uh, will be happy to help uh, but for now thank you very much for watching this video hopefully you found it uh informative and useful uh, don't forget uh, to like it don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed to uh, my youtube channel 
and I'll see you in the future again uh, on my channel. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.